you were on that video conference, right, on Friday The uh, for league employees. Can you walk everybody through what you were willing to share from that? Yeah, I mean, myself and MJ Acosta actually moderated the panel. Okay, then. Um, so we were really kind of the drivers of, of some of the discussion that were three panelists there. Kind of, uh, there were three panels, experts in different forms of race and society and, and things like this. So um, without giving you know away too much, because it was an in-house uh, meeting, some, some, you know, Roger Goodell came on and addressed – all the employees on the call and he stated, you know, the league was going to do certain things, this and that. And he came back and told us that he would be dropping the video that we now saw a little bit later in the day and what that meant. But he did not disclose some of the things in there, such as, you know, they, they, they support, uh, you know, black lives matter. You know, they addressed everything that the players had addressed in their video. Um, but Rich, this, this meeting was like nothing I'd ever experienced in terms of it, it very much resembled what's going on in the streets. It was young people, the young employees of the NFL telling a lot of their pain, uh, addressing on how they felt neglected by the NFL in house as employees. Um, and they were speaking directly to the commissioner and all of the executives on the call. I mean, it was, um, you know, I'm 54 years old now, and I'm, I'm looking back at myself saying, man, I have 25, where I have the stones to speak to the big boss like these people did. It was jarring. It was moving. It was inspirational. And trust me, it got, it got the attention of a lot of people, not just me, but the shot, the shot callers in the NFL, the NFL Network, and NFL Films. And, you know, I think by the time that call ended, 90 minutes or two hours later, I don't think I got up out of the chair I was sitting in for 30 minutes. No kidding. I, yeah, Rich, I was exhausted. I was inspired. It was, it was like, what, what are we about to see here? Because there was, you know, you have this sense of, is something really going to happen? Like, you, you feel like something may really happen. Like, you know, so many times in American history when we've had flashpoints like this. Think back to 2016, the year the cap sat down for the national anthem. We're proceeding that with the shooting deaths of, of so many black men, unarmed black men by police. It was very similar. There were people in the streets, not, not, not loud, as loud as here, but it went away. And now we're back here. And, this, and that cycle has happened so many times in American history. But from what I'm seeing, when I got off that call, I'm like, something may actually freaking happen. And, and, and it was really, I mean, in terms of the NFL, um, you know, you, you could see that this was not something that was done by giving owners a heads up. You know, this was like Roger Goodell and the NFL taking care of its own house. And, and that's something we, a lot of times we don't see, Rich. You and I both know this. You know, a lot of things are done for the approval of the, you know, 32 owners. How can we pacify all 32? Or at least a majority of them. This was, how can we pacify the people who work for this organization? Not pacify, but address the people who work for this organization before we even start spreading our wings. So it's the first time I think some real housekeeping um, took place as to where the needle might actually be moved.